The treatment of hyperkalemia is based on the strategy of first attempting to stabilize the cardiac membrane, then by shifting extracellular potassium intracellularly, and finally attempting to remove overall potassium levels from the body. A mnemonic I used to remember these treatment options was C big K drop, where the highlighted letters represent a modality to treat hyperkalemia. C stands for calcium, which directly antagonizes the membrane actions of hyperkalemia on cardiac cells. It's given intravenously either as calcium gluconate or calcium chloride and has its effects on cardiac myocytes within minutes. B stands for beta adrenergic agonists and bicarbonate. Both of these therapies lead to shifts of potassium intracellularly. Albuterol can be given as a nebulized solution or intravenously with onset of action varying from 30 minutes with intravenous infusion and up to 90 minutes with nebulized albuterol. In the case of sodium bicarbonate, the data for its use in the acute setting is less convincing, with benefits seen in cases mostly with prolonged infusions in the setting of a metabolic acidosis, although it could be given as a bolus. However, the effects of sodium bicarbonate can take up to several hours to take effect. The I and G stand for insulin and glucose, or clinically, in some cases, dextrose. Insulin also causes a shift of extracellular potassium intracellularly, with a relatively quick time of onset of 10 to 20 minutes, with effects lasting several hours. Glucose or dextrose, typically given alongside insulin, is used to prevent hypoglycemia. K stands for K-exalate, which is the brand name for sodium polystyrene sulfonate, a gastrointestinal cation exchanger, which lowers potassium levels by binding to it in the gastrointestinal tract in exchange for another cation such as sodium or calcium, and then subsequently removed from the body in the stool, which is a process that could take several hours to have any effect. And finally, D stands for diuretics and dialysis. Furosemide is a loop diuretic which causes an increase in potassium loss in the urine resulting in an overall decrease in potassium levels from the body. The time of onset is 15 minutes, where a typical 40 mg intravenous dose can be repeated every 12 hours. Dialysis, also known as hemodialysis, is the definitive treatment for hyperkalemia because it physically removes potassium from the body and its effects are immediate. Often, however, it takes time to mobilize the appropriate personnel to perform the procedure. So even though dialysis is fast in removing potassium from the body, it may take several minutes to hours to start hemodialysis in a patient, depending on the patient's vascular access and the capabilities of the hospital or clinic you are practicing in. And so many times, the medications listed previously would have already been given prior to starting hemodialysis.